Welcome back to the Reflector Channel. This is a, another episode in the restoration series of the giant Orion 14-inch Dobsonian telescope. What we have here is the base of the telescope. I've removed the upright structures so that we can get right to the problem of today's video. You know, Dobsonians are known for their ease of use. They spin left and right really easily. That's because of the bearing surface that they have in between. For smaller telescopes, they have Teflon blocks in here that slide on this type of surface here. But you know, as the telescopes get bigger, they move to putting either ball bearings or roller bearings in the form of a Lazy Susan, very similar to what you might have on your dinner table. Now, this one has a problem in that when I spin it, it makes a weird sound and you can almost feel it too. There's some gunk on the bearings and it makes a, a weird sound that's very subtle, but it's like a wop, 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 wop sound as I move it back and forth. So in this episode, we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna take it apart and clean up the Lazy Susan and the roller bearings that are in there and see if we can get this rolling as smooth as possible. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so it has these four cap head screws, and we're going to remove these. From my research, I found out that the Lazy Susan is believed to have been invented by Thomas Jefferson, and he invented it for his daughter. Now, they called it a dumbwaiter at the time. So apparently, uh, his daughter was not lazy, and she was not called Susan either. No, in fact, it wasn't until 1917 that the term Lazy Susan was even uh, invented. It showed up in a Vanity Fair advertisement, and it didn't even make its way into the Webster's Dictionary until 1933. Uh, here's a Lazy Susan that we have on our dinner table. They're still very common. All right, those were surprisingly loose. Uh, all right. There's just a metal disc. And let's see what we have here. All right, there's the dust shield right here, this ring around here. All right, that could have gone smoother. All right, so there's the dust ring up on top. It's just foam. We'll have to take a look at that and see if that needs replaced. But this is the Lazy Susan. This is the, the heart of this. Look at that. Pretty darn cool. This is just sheet metal. It seems to be in good shape. Just galvanized sheet metal. It's fairly, it's actually fairly thick. And what do we have here? And I lift this up. All right, so we have another sheet metal disc on the bottom, but here we have it. It's called, uh, it's often called the wagon wheel. Look at this, there's little, roller bearings all around the outside. This has a lot of grease on it, so apparently either it came from the factory that way or a previous owner put a ton of grease on that and it looks to be gunked up. If you've ever uh, cleaned one of these or done any maintenance on this, I would love to hear from you. Uh, please leave your comments and ideas uh, down in the comments section below the video. So I think what we're gonna have to do first of all is clean everything. Uh, I'll remove the roller bearings if I can and clean them. I have an ultrasonic cleaner that I think will work. But let's clean it up, and then we'll decide if we're gonna use a lubricant, what type, uh, either a dry lubricant or a wet lubricant, or no lubricant at all. So let's start taking the roller bearings out. This is a close-up of one of the roller bearings right here. Uh, you can see there's so much grease on here. My idea is to, look at that. Lots of grease. My idea is to take these roller bearings and clean them individually or, or in the ultrasonic cleaner with some soapy water. Let's see if we can poke, poke these out. Oh, they're not. How are they? Okay, I need to, hang on, I need to wipe this off. Just gonna clean one of these off and see what we can do here. Let's wipe this gunk off. Oh, that's a lot. Can this, can these come out? Are these held in there? Is it just friction? Can I put one out? 
Yeah, I think they're just in a friction fit. I think. Uh, why did that not come out? Let me get these. I'm just gonna try to poke one of these out just to see if I can get it out. Boy, these are not coming out as easy as I hoped. Oh, all right. Okay, so there's one of the roller bearings. This is gonna take a while. I'm gonna get all these out of here. Okay, so there are 36 of these little bearings. So while I'm doing that, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. One of the reasons why I show so much used Orion equipment on this channel is because I really like it. It is high quality stuff. On occasion, I do purchase it new from Orion, and you know there was one time where I had a problem with it and I contacted customer service and they were fantastic. They took care of it and I was a, a very happy customer. However, if you've been in this hobby for long enough, you've probably heard the rumors that basically if you buy the equipment used and then you contact Orion to either buy spare parts or ask a question, they will either ignore you or they won't sell you the spare parts. As a person who worked in customer service for many years, this seemed like a very bizarre business policy. I mean, imagine if the alternator on your Chevy truck died and you marched down to the Chevy parts dealer with cash in your hand and you said, I need an alternator, and they look you in the eye and they say, no. It just seems like a really dumb business policy, but you know what? They are a successful corporation. Perhaps they know what they're doing. While researching this lazy Susan lubricant question, uh, I did contact them once again. And as soon as they found out it was used, that was pretty much the end of the conversation. I assume maybe they put it on the back burner and by back burner, I mean way back, you know, behind the bathroom, behind the warehouse, in the alley and straight in the dumpster, perhaps. I do still hold out hope that Orion will answer my question about the lazy Susan lubricant. Uh, and to their credit, you know, perhaps it's not an easy question. Maybe it's something they've never been asked before, or maybe it's a proprietary lubricant that they don't want to tell anybody about. I don't know. If they do respond, I will put it down in the description box below. So here's the roller bearings. We're going to clean them in the ultrasonic cleaner. I've got some hot soapy water. Let me get rid of some of these suds so we can see it in action. They're pretty darn cool to watch. All right, so I'll turn it on. The actual sound of the ultrasonic cleaner drives this microphone bonkers. So I think I'm just going to fast forward through the cleaning part of this. The sound sure caught somebody's attention. I'm going to use a cow magnet to pull the roller bearings out of the ultrasonic bath. So by the way, when I lift this up, remember this is the upper surface because this is all flipped upside down. We have these three plastic sections right here bolted down. Um, and here's the main axle that you saw uh, in the previous video. You saw the top of this actually, where the clutch is connected. So I think what we're gonna do now is just reassemble this. All right, so where are we? Well, after being kicked to the curb by customer service, I was able to find some helpful advice from both the Cloudy Nights forums and the Facebook groups. And the general consensus was first try no lubricant at all. Now, I know that goes against a lot of the uh, engineering principles to not put any on, but I guess the idea is that these Lazy Susans turn so slow and the weight is so evenly distributed among the 36 roller bearings that it probably won't be much of a problem. So I'm going to try that. And, you know, in practice, it's easier to add lubricant to it if there's a problem than to take the lubricant back out. So what do we have? Well, we have this freshly cleaned disc here. You can see the little, the little trail that the roller bearings have left. And we have this plastic wagon wheel that will have roller bearings in it. And we put on top of that another disc. And this is the Lazy Susan. If it had roller bearings, this would spin right now. So where do we start? Well, we start by putting the roller bearings back in the slots.
You know, in hindsight, with all the effort that it took to remove the roller bearings and clean them and put them back in, I'm wondering if maybe that was a waste of time and whether I could have just cleaned the wagon wheel with warm soapy water and, and gotten the same effect. Uh, but you know what? This was a learning experience. And if you try this on your Lazy Susan, on your telescope, maybe the first time around, just go ahead and clean it with uh, soap and water and get it as clean and dry as you can. And uh, try that as a first attempt and see what happens. If you do, please leave a comment about it down below. I'm missing a bearing. Funny story. This has 36 roller bearings and I came up one short while I was reassembling it. I retraced every step that I made while cleaning and I found this roller bearing in the trash can. That was a fun search, but we have all the roller bearings now. All done. All right, so we have the wagon wheel with all the bearings back on. Let's put the other disc on. And see how it turns. Ooh, that's very smooth, actually. Very smooth. Okay, I like that. All right, let's take a look at the dust shield from the other disc. Oh my gosh, that's heavy. All right, so this is the old dust shield. Uh, you know, it almost looks it almost looks homemade. I don't know if a person added that. Uh, I'm gonna have to clean this. There's a bunch of uh, lubricant that got on this. And I'm going to add one more. I'm going to leave this one here. Uh, parts of it aren't sticking anymore. I might glue those down. I'm going to add one more layer of dust shield around the outside of this. I bought some self-sticking insulation that should work pretty well. But first I'm going to clean this with rubbing alcohol to make sure it's as clean as possible. Alright, so this is going to make up sort of a, a double layer of dust shield to prevent dust from making it into the Lazy Susan. And now we're at the point where we can reassemble this. Okay, so we have an inner belt dust shield and an outer belt dust shield. They're all about uh, 3 eighths of an inch thick. <clears throat> I measured that ahead of time. It's not a, it's, it's a slightly smaller than the actual gap, but I think that's fine. Dust migrates in from the bottom. Uh, on, on lower surfaces. So now I think we're just going to flip this over and reattach it and see how everything works. Have to make sure everything is lined up. It's still smooth, pretty smooth. Let's flip this over. That's actually pretty smooth. I don't hear any of this old sounds. I think the true test will be to basically assemble the whole telescope and give that a try.
<laughs> All right, this is about 80% of the weight. Let's give it a spin. It spins really smooth now. There's still no slop in the system now that we fixed the clutch. To be honest, uh, the Lazy Susan seems to be operating much smoother now. The problem is though, you know, I can still, I can still feel there might be a slight out of roundness for some of the bearings, but it's actually not too bad. And I think it's something that we can live with. Functionally, I think this telescope is ready to go outside and see first light, but not yet. There's a couple of odds and ends that we still have to do. We have to clean the dusty mirror, it's first, and we have to add some grease to the worm gears. Uh, I didn't do that in the last video. And I have to attach the eyepiece rack on the front just for completeness sake. And, you know, there's a couple of other small odds and ends, and we're going to complete all of those in the next video. And then we get to finally take this outside and see some pretty awesome stuff. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment, and clear skies, everybody.